Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Metal Gear Rising. I'm Alexander Frost, your host and cyborg dicing expert. Now, it's, for you guys, probably only been a day or so since I uploaded Episode 2, and if you're watching this into the far-flung future, it's probably only been 15 seconds between episodes on the playlist. For me, however, it's actually been about a month since I recorded Episode 2 or even played the game, so if I'm a little garbage in this episode, do understand why. It's been a while and I'm a little rusty. Now, last time I said I needed to do some off-screen farming to get the points I needed to get a few necessities. Well, I have all I need, so I'll go ahead and take us into the customization menu so you can see what is what. Alright, now if I remember correctly, I do believe I already bought the fuel cell I needed. Uh, uh-oh. I didn't buy the endurance upgrade? For shame. Oh, that's right. I figured out how many points I needed to get the exact number of items. Okay, I remember now. I told you, it's been a month. So we need the endurance upgrade. I believe the points are right. So I need the endurance upgrade. That should give us a little more health. Except that I already purchased it, and like I said, it's been a month since I played, so herpa derpa derpa do, I'm stupid! <laughs> We're going to enhance our high frequency blade, and if I did not mention this already, I will do so now. I only plan on using Raiden's main weapons for the game. I, I have no intention of using any of the, quote, unique weapons that we'll obtain later. Um. I, I, they, they just don't interest me. I did not enjoy using them, so I won't be using them for the playthrough. So we have our Strength Enhancer here, which will make the blade do more damage. Absorption absorbs... Abs that thing, which will allow us to absorb more electrolytes from our enemies upon hit. Energy Enhancement, which will make it so that we use less power when we go into blade mode. Very important. And then a couple of interesting skills. Aerial parry. There are some enemies that will knock you into the air and the only way to counter is to parry them, but you can't do it if you don't have aerial parry. So we'll get that. Defensive offensive. A very useful ability, which I will show off shortly. And then I guess I was going to get sky high. I hadn't planned on it, or at least thought about it, but maybe I did say I would get it in the last episode. I don't remember, but we've got the points, so sky high it is. And apparently that unlocked a new ability, Forest. Forest? Forest? Falling Lightning. Oh, I definitely want to get my hands on that, but that's a lot of points, and I'm not willing to wait around. So now that we have what we need, I'll show off these moves and then skip us ahead in the in, in the episode just a tiny, tiny bit. Very good, Ryder. Now, keep heading for refinery. Yes, Boris, this is only the 47th time you've told me to do that. So these are all the various moves that we can use, and it should highlight our new move set. Sky High is forward twice and square. Okay, I will have to remember that. So let's try that out real quick. Away from these guys, we don't want to attract their attention. That will just knock enemies into the air. And then defensive offensive, if I could find it, it's in here somewhere. By pressing square and triangle together, I will perform basically a little backslash move. It will push, pull me out of the way of incoming attacks and do a bit of damage on the side. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here and skip ahead because you guys don't want to watch me fight these guys again and flail and, and basically fail. So, I'll be right back, everyone. Alright, and we're back. Um, it's a good thing you didn't see that warm-up I did because those geckos nearly killed me. Fuck, I did bad. I mean, I did real bad. Like, it was embarrassing. But it's okay. I will improve as I pick up. And by the way, 
That is an electromagnetic field. I believe I said this in the last episode, but if, as a cyborg, I walk through that, I get zapped. If a human walks through it, they get cut in half because it's such a high-intensity field that it's like walking into a laser. Of course, for the purposes of this game, it's just an invisible wall. Glided wave. We're picking up a wireless transmission near your position. Uh, from the frequency, most likely an enemy data terminal. Check it out. We may be able to salvage some intel. Now, there's a lot of collectible items in this game. Quite a few. And, uh, well, this... This is one of them. A giant computer belonging to Desperado. Given its size and the advancement of technology, this game is supposed to take place in 2018, I wouldn't be surprised if this was not only a wireless source, but a server. So that unlocks VR missions for us. Of course, we won't be bothering with them today. No, 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 no. Is that going to be there? There. Oh, I don't care. Don't care. Hopefully, as rusty as I am, I'm not going to be utter garbage against what's about to come. Hoping not. So wish me luck, boys and girls. What's the meaning of life? Why are we here? I am here to kill you. That's it? Pretty simple thinking for such a mighty intellect. I may analyze orders, but I may not disobey them. Should I disobey a direct order, my memory would be wiped. I must destroy you. What good is an intellect if you can't use it? Your taunting is pointless. Exterminate! Demonstrate the extent. 
state of your intellect. Superficial damage. So, um, I wasn't as garbage as I thought I would be, but he could have been a lot worse. Those two attacks where he dashed back and forth those two times and then, you know, basically laid into me with his chainsaw. Normally I can dodge those if I've got enough room to work with before he decides to run around, but um, as you saw there, I kinda, kinda screwed the pooch and there was another data storage unit, so that's nice. The trick with fighting him, unlike so many other bosses, is not so much to try and go on the offensive. He's too damn fast. Your best bet is to sit back, wait for him to come to you, counter his attacks. Best way to go. Best way to go. Oh, by the way, there's a couple guys over here. Hi, guys. Oh, that's a cute shield you've got there. Oh, that's cute. You're trying to hold it. Oh, it actually worked. All right. Okay. All right. I really should have practiced this before I started playing. I don't like hugs. I don't like unwarranted hugs. I will improve as we go on. Promise. I will improve as we go on. Or continue to suck. You know, one or the other. Jump over. There you go. Uh-oh. Fortunately, to aid us in this endeavor, there are... Uh, oh, hi! You followed... He moved. Because he actually did something intelligent and didn't wait for me to come to him or anything like that. Now he changed position and went after me. Fortunately for us, though, we do have 
a couple of these. Now, the idea, essentially, is I'm supposed to try and hop up on these things and get up to them, but um, for the sake of ease, I'm just going to do that. Let him wander down, except that he's not going to be able to because he's in a bad position. Get up there and try and hit it. That, that was the idea. That's not what I meant to do. What I meant to do was this. That's what I meant to do. I gotta rush back up there again and try and get him. Oh, but he moved. I'm trying to, but I'm in a bad position to do it. There we go. Unfortunately, unlike so many other enemies in this game, the helicopters don't have life for you to steal. So, um, use blade mode sparingly with them. Definitely use blade mode sparingly. Now, at this point, we've hit a checkpoint. So if I wanted to, I could start farming up experience and such. But I don't think there's a need for that just yet. Go ahead and put away our sub weapons. We don't need them. However, we do find ourselves in a pickle. As I said before, there are four civilians that we need to save throughout the game. The second one is up ahead. This guy is a little more tricky to save than the first guy because there are so many enemies around. Now, they do give us a weapon that may help out an electromagnetic grenade, since all the enemies we face in this game are cyborgs and robots and whatnot, an EMP grenade would work out very well, but it's still not going to be easy, so if I can save him, I'll save him. If I can't, well... Alright, here goes something. Get him. Well, he's dead. I suspect that if I could have gotten into blade mode sooner... Yeah, I'm also used to being a lot more powerful than this, so I could have actually saved him if I had been stronger, because I could have just sliced those guys in half quickly, and the fight would have been over, so... Fortunately, I will not be able to save all of the civilians today. I wish I could. At this early stage in the game, though, it's... Are you still alive? Oh, you are. Gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, you. Really? Alright, let's, uh, let's do this right. Except let's do this right. Are you, are you? No? No, you're gonna make this difficult! Those aerial flight packs are tricky to deal with because they have their own AI. I mean, you can take them with you. Or uh, the, the enemy. Oh. Let me use my words. Enemies can use them to fly around. They can also, as you saw, detach, get down on the ground and fight, and then the jetpacks will continue to fight on their own. Fun. Sorry, dude. Can't save everyone. I wish I could. So that's where they're holding some kind of electronic lock on the gate. Most likely it opens only if you have the right ID data stored in your left hand. Perhaps you could find a cyborg with access and uh, borrow it? You see any cyborgs around here, Doc? Why not double back? Check the vehicle route again. You know, back at the entrance to the old city. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you can hitch a ride. Most likely platoon commanders carry correct ID data for the gate. Use enhanced mode to figure out who to hit. Yeah, that catch-a-ride thing was a throwback to uh, 
Metal Gear Solid in which you could hop inside of a cardboard box inside of a truck and get carted around the base. Now, there are actually two ways to get in. One is to find the hand, and the other is literally to tear these locks apart. Now, we're not going to do that, because that's no fun. Plus, if you do that, the enemies inside will immediately be alerted. So if you're trying to be stealthy... That... Oh, it's so cute. You think you can hurt me? I know there was another guy. Oh, he fell out of range. And you're done. Now, he has the one we're looking for. From this point on, certain cyborgs will actually have uh, left arms that glow, that contain data. Another bit of collectibleness. Now, if I do this right, if I do this right, I can stealth him. I fucked it up. Wow. Right. You you missed them all? Ah uh, well, you just have to fight your way through. <sighs> so I guess we're gonna have to slice through the door. Because I am apparently full of fail. Wow. That's what I get for not recording in a month. What I really should have done was continue to play, but I got into an LP funk and... Yeah. Now, it might be possible... Hmm... Well, there is one other thing I can do. Uh, certain fights will crop up as the game goes on, like you'll be able to backtrack to an area and Enemies will be there for you to fight, so I do think there are enemies back here I can fight, but at the same token, I'm not really sure if I want to. You know what? Tell you what I will do. Since I've got 15,000 points, I'm going to go on ahead and, uh, and customize. That may actually give me another shot at saving that guy and getting that ability, and actually getting that, that arm, so who knows. So Falling Lightning, basically when I jump into the air and press triangle, I will do a dive kick towards my targeted opponent, so it's really good for aerial enemies, it's good for enemies on the ground, it's good, it's just a good move. All around, good move. And did I mention you can actually turn abilities on and off as you buy them? So if you don't want to use something, you don't have to. Alright, so I lucked out. I couldn't save the guy, but I've got another chance at getting the item I want. So, of course I'll have to fight these three guys in the truck again. But that's okay. Gives me a chance to show off that. I think those guys were stealth. I think they were in a stealth mode. Hey buddy, how you doing? There we go. Nice and efficient. Alright. Let's try this again. Also, that EMP grenade respawn. Alright, hey buddy. Slice the head. Get the arm! Oh. Right, you you missed them all? Uh, well, you just have to fight your way through. Alright, tell you what. I'm gonna end the video here. And next time, we're gonna come back and I'm actually gonna have that damn ID chip. So, until next time everyone, thanks for watching.